Right before C was accredited as a nonprofit in Canada, the reason why we even came on the map was because in Ontario in 2018, the provincial government wanted to close the Ontario Provincial Advocates Office for Children, which is called the Ontario Child Advocates Office. I had worked there prior and it wasn't necessarily the perfect place. It had its faults, but it did a really good job in terms of systemic advocacy and in terms of gathering people, lived experts, young people. And it was almost like losing a sacred space. <laughs> so when that was happening, I remember hearing it on the news and I was shocked because we didn't see that coming. And I called Erwin Elman, who was the provincial advocate, and he was in another country on another continent, I think, at that time. I was like, hi, how come you didn't say anything to me? And he said, I just found out along with you. Um, so he didn't even know that the pr the province was closing down the, the, the independent office of the legislature <laughs> until I called him as well. At that point, it was more grieving because it was such a, a space with memories and just a, a space that did really great work. Was all the work done in a great way? I don't think so. However, it was still an important integral office and it did bring together people. I was part of the systemic advocacy in terms of provincial health rights for young people, and it was such an important project. I ended up connecting with another young person. At that time, they were working for a community health clinic, and I said, I'm interested in gathering people. Are you interested in doing that too? They were, and so we ended up gathering with about 20, 25 young people at that time, the same day that we heard the news and gathered that people in the basement of the community health clinic. We started a grieving process. We have the right to grieve. At at that point, I was like, okay, we're grieving, but what are we going to do about this? <laughs> and then at that point, I started to shift the conversation from grieving to action. Part of the action that we decided was that we're going to start planning some community action. By that time, I think a couple of meetings later, we probably had like six people left. And that's usually an organic process for groups, right? People fall off and the, and the right people stay. With that group, we did a Queens Park rally where hundreds of people came. Prior to that rally, we created a Facebook page as well and we didn't realize it was going to take off. We just wanted to do something to make sure we could get the office to remain open. We ended up having the rally and hundreds of people came, including a lot of young people and people from the system as well, in terms of people, professionals in the system. Then also had partnered with, I think it was Ryerson or another university, can't remember now who it was, but we partnered with them to do a press conference as well at the legislature for the media and also with some of the politicians. At the rally, we had a bunch of lived expert speakers. We had allied speakers, and we also had major political party politicians there as well from all parties. I think the only party that wasn't necessarily there who were invited, but I guess they had better things to do, was the current provincial government. But it's totally understandable because they were the ones who were closing down the office. After that happened, we thought, okay, we did what we could do, and now we're going to go back to our own lives. And that was, I was the uh, Way Home Toronto coordinator at the time. So I went back to work. Then we had a lot of messages on Facebook saying, hi, where are you guys? And I was like, oh, okay, maybe there's something here. Then we realized that the community wanted us to exist. So we started to maintain the Facebook page. Then in 2020, during the pandemic, we got incorporated officially. 